Welcome. Namaste. For class today, we're going to do some poses using a chair. And in a moment, we'll get right into it. So you'll see what we're doing. And um, if you have a couch nearby, that might be the same difference. So um, we'll use a prop like that and then a cushion, blanket or towel and a small weight. So I just have a full water bottle, something two or three pounds will be plenty. And our first pose is legs up the chair. So for this, you'll be scooching pretty close to the edge of that furniture. You may want to use your cushion to prop up either under your calves or under your hips. We want to feel that the weight of the shin is totally supported by the seat. Give yourself time to make adjustments and experiment to see what feels really good and relaxing. two different arm variations are possible. Well, a lot are possible. <laughs> I wanted to offer grounding with palms touching your belly or receiving with arms out to the side and palms up. Settle in gradually to the still moment. Breathe in the freshness of your breath. As you pay attention to what you feel, this brings you into the present moment. Sometimes I do a little activity of just how fascinated I feel and I kind of prime the pump, like how fascinating is it to be resting on the floor, aligning my spine, how fascinating it feels to breathe, to open up the corners of the lungs, and really how fascinating it is to have an experience of being a human an experience of consciousness. Drink in your breath deep and slow. Each time you breathe out, just savor that. Make it very complete so you can breathe in more fully. In the three-part breath, this is often called the full yogic breath, you're breathing through the upper lungs, middle and lower lungs as well. When your breath flows in, it's kind of like a wave, filling the upper chest, middle, lower lungs. And then after your breath is full, that wave recedes, emptying out one part of the lungs at a time. There are different ways you might experience the movement of your breath. Some people feel the breath travel first through the upper lungs when you breathe in and gradually to the lower lungs. And it's also fine to fill up your belly first. So for some of us, we breathe low and then the breath fills the middle and upper lungs.
relax into the wave rhythm of your breath. We'll take a few more minutes to relax in this position. You are invited to stay with this breath. The breath is wave-like, a sense of equal length for your inhales and exhales. by placing full awareness in the here and now. This extracts your energy from any stress, any to-dos from the day, and you are recharging by paying attention to this moment with your breath. This posture is something I do pretty much every day. If you spend 15 minutes here, this restores space to all of the spinal discs. Our backs become compressed when we're upright during the day. And just taking this break to be reclined, to take the weight of the lower body off of the spine is very healing for our back. We'll enjoy another minute to breathe and rest. If eyes are closed, open gently. Reach and place hands on the top of your thigh. We'll just do some cat paws, pushing with one hand and the other. Whatever you can reach, maybe you make a fist too, just pushing on the quad muscles. Do that on the inner side of your femur bone and then some uh, tapping or pressing on the outside of the femur. It can be a, a strong stretch, but for some of us, it feels really good to push up at the top of the thigh. You kind of press the thigh bone away from your tailbone, and that creates space in your low back. 
go easy and see how that feels. Release. With knees bent, just curl over and lie on your side. We'll take a moment to rearrange. So if you have furniture close by, just clear it so that your mat is open. For the next pose, you'll be lying on your side. Your cushion or blanket could be a pillow for the head. And this is where we're going to use that small weight. Knees are bent. For the first part of the movement, we're rotating the hip. This is called clamshells and flippers. Place top hand on the, the pelvic crest. And with this hand, you're just guiding your pelvis to stay steady while you're rotating your knee. So up and down. And then the flipper movement is knees together, feet apart. So try alternating that. Knees open, and then knees together, feet apart. And we're trying to do all of that without rocking the pelvis front to back. So the pelvis is stationary. Once you've got the hang of that, feel free to add your arm. So we're doing a robot arm. The arm stays beside the torso. It can be a little bit of a brain game, <laughs> adding all of it together. So with a little weight for your arm, this is strengthening the rotator cuff. The external rotators, they're kind of the underdogs of the shoulder, but important in the stability of the shoulder. Let the pose sink in. It's like uh, in the dark room, back when we did non-digital photos, you just slowly watch the pose reveal. Then you start to feel these deeper muscles. As always, you're going at your own pace. Nice. Just take one more. Ah. <laughs> Stretch your legs long and flex the foot that's closest to the floor. So that's helping you to uh, stay level. Take the top arm and leg up into a V shape and reach, reach, reach. Put a karate kick edge in your top foot. It may take a little core for you to balance on your side. The bottom arm could also reach forward. This is anantasana or the couch pose. Another deep breath. Exhale, lower down. Roll over and we'll take that on the other side. I'm going to flip on my mat, but you may just be rolling over whatever you'd like. Yeah, we're waking up the deep rotators of our hip and our shoulder. Knees bent. Start with top hand on hip going into the clamshell and then the flipper. This sequence um, can help balance our hips. I've seen um, it help people's knees and low backs as well. So kind of the, the neighboring joints <laughs> can often benefit from um, greater hip stability. Breathing easy, no need to breathe heavily or forcefully, just breathing fully. When you've got the hang of the legs, add your robot arm. Elbow is by the side of the body. It's okay if your range of motion is smaller. We're going for integrity. The pelvis is level. It doesn't rock forward or back to move the leg. Relax and let the pose reveal itself. Great, take one more. Ooh, 
Ooh, those little movements, you can really feel them. Straight legs, flex the bottom ankle to help you balance. Take top arm and leg out and reach into that long shape. Bottom arm can also be used for stability. Flex the top ankle, reach, 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 breathing fully. One more breath in. Exhale, lower down. At this point, just roll over so that you are lying down on your belly. Stack your hands and we'll take another resting pose, which is the crocodile. Find a comfortable place for your head to rest on your hands. For leg positioning, there's different options of rolling the toes in or rolling them out. And if you roll out, just really turn your knees out as well. Tune in to the wave movement of your breath. Observe how the in-breath lifts the spine, how the out-breath releases. This pose has a therapeutic effect of training our diaphragm, which is the primary breathing muscle. This posture with the arms under the head also helps to turn off the neck muscles so they're not overexerting themselves, trying to help the breath happen. So we're really focusing the breath in the core area. And you don't have to really try hard. You're more just observing what your body does naturally. We'll get ready for a half locust flow. If your toes are turned out, just roll them in so the top of your foot or the toenail side of the foot is resting on the ground. Raise your head and raise one leg. Try to straighten that knee and push the ball of the foot. Relax down to the mat, head and foot. And then lift your head again with the other leg slowly lower down. So that'll be our flow, lifting and releasing down. Back of the neck is long, so that means you're looking more downward than forward. One more on each leg. Place hands under shoulders, ease back into child's pose. This will be the opposite movement for the back, so you may need to ease in a little more than you were expecting. The knees are about shoulder width. They could go wider or narrower to help your back be comfortable.
allow your spine to round like a turtle, turtle shell and your breath travels under the spine to help it open up. One more breath resting. Rise up and take table pose. I was thinking if you're doing the water bottle weight, then you drink more water and your weight gets lighter. Coming into downward dog, you may wish to walk the hands forward one handprint Toes curl under as you lift the hips high. Bend elbows lightly as you work the index finger base further into the ground. Try to take pressure from the outer wrist point and distribute it across to the base of the thumb and then out into the base of each finger. Let your breath expand and walk the dog. Finish the pose with a little tick-tock of your head, side to side, front to back, shaking yes and no. Tiptoe your feet forward, bending knees, and rise up to stand. Take your time getting here. All right, let's move with bear twists feet a little wider than the shoulders make sure you've got clearance from the things around you so you can spin freely side to side soft breathing a little foot detail is to pivot up onto the toes whatever foot is behind you that foot is going to pivot onto the toes go whatever pace works for you Feel tension loosen up around the upper shoulder blade, around the neck and chest. Slow that down gradually. Make your way to the front of the mat, short edge of the mat. The mountain pose, standing tall. Balance body weight between your feet. There's always room to adjust your footprints for what feels grounding, what helps you feel like you have a root system that is supporting you. Allow your breath to flow soft and natural while you stand tall like a mountain. Place hands to hips and take a long stride back with your right foot. For warrior one, we're planting the back heel, bend and straighten into the front knee, starting to warm that up. Put your whole footprint firmly into the mat and stay connected through the back heel. Sometimes that's the deepest part of the stretch is actually the back calf. Bend the front knee and open your arms out into cactus. Bend the elbows. Lengthen through the base of your skull upward and the tailbone slightly downward as you ground the back heel. Straighten your front leg, crisscross arms to shoulders and drop your chin. Bend front knee, breathe in, open your wings. Exhale, straight front leg, crisscross arms, drop the head. Inhale, open wings, bend the knee. Exhale, straighten and relax. Stay on that movement, following your breath. When we do a flow, 
it's not necessary to be rhythmic per se or um, like robotic. More we're trying to follow the way the breath wants to move. Paying close attention. The next time you bend the front knee, push off the back foot, step forward. You may like to roll the ankles out before we take the other side. <clears throat> Hands to hips, long stride with your left foot. Step back, bend and straighten into the front knee. This is a great time just to customize, like adjust your stance, feet a little wider or narrower. Outer edge of the back foot is grounded. Bend into front knee and open arms into cactus. Find the space of your breath and let your spine lengthen. Up through the crown of the head and the chin will nod down just a little bit when you do that. And then there could be a little abdominal tone as your tailbone points down. Straighten front leg. We've got the crisscross arms. Drop the chin. Breathe in, bend the knee, open your wings. Breathe out, straight leg, cross arms. Steady movement, following your breath. Last round, with the front knee bent, push from the back foot, step forward, give your ankles a, a swirl, see how that felt. Let's come into the tree pose. Balance your feet underneath your hips. And before we're balancing on one foot, just get a sense of balance on two feet. Rock your weight side to side, just pouring all the way into one foot and then the other. And really ease into that. See if you can pivot all the way over and then just float one foot. Balance briefly and just do that on the other side. So even before you're all the way into a formal pose, you get a sense of how your balance happens. I feel it's also important about balancing in yoga that you're never perfectly still is my experience. It's there's these small movements in your foot muscles and your ankle muscles that are developing. It's really the core of your um, ankle and foot. See which foot you'd like to balance on first. Shifting weight over, start with hands on hips and open the other knee. So this leg could rise up down with the foot following the inner leg. The kickstand is always an option where you have the heel by the ankle and toes on the floor. Find the vertical alignment of your spine and your choice to keep hands on hips or raise arms overhead, the branches of the tree. Get a sense of your root system, anchors down through their standing foot. Feel the wind through the branches of the trees as you breathe fully. One more breath in, open up your heart. Exhale, land on the mat. Another opportunity if you like to Release ankle or foot. Start with balance on two feet as you explore the other side, Trikonasana, or the tree. See what foot position will suit you.
one thing we're avoiding is the foot resting right on the knee. We don't want to really push on the inside of the knee. So just take care of your knee. Hands could stay on hips or raise arms. Anytime you come out of the pose, just go over to the other side. Finish your breath here. Release down, feet to mat. Shake things out a little bit. Step wide out to the side. We'll come into the goddess pose, also known as horse. Toes are turned out a bit. And when you set up the dimensions of the pose, I like to have the ankles beneath the knee joints. Start with a twist, hands on the, the thighs, lengthen your elbows, and drop one shoulder down, one shoulder back. Try both sides, side to side. Use your exhale to deepen the twist. When you're at one side, really wring out your spine. Try to empty out all the air. And try that same exhale approach on the other side. See how the exhale facilitates your twist. Great. Slowly come up. Walk your heels apart from each other. Arms behind the back. A couple different arm positions. Hands interlaced. Or you could hold, bend your elbows and hold opposite wrists. Take a deep breath, push through your feet, lift your chest. Breathe out as you fold forward, long spine over long legs. Tune into your knees. Some of us have the ability to kind of pop the knee joint back a little too far. So just sense if that may be you and see if a slight bend gets you more in touch with the muscles around the knee. So the little bend in the knee is helping to cultivate muscular support for the joint. Ground your feet as you rise up. Heel toe feet toward each other. Let's finish our standing time with some more bear twists. Option for a little tap where you just bend your elbows as you get to one side. Maybe you're tapping shoulder, hip, somewhere on your back. Just see how that feels. Let's make our way down to sit on the mat. When you're sitting, this might be a good time to use a cushion so that your spine can be tall. One landmark we're looking for is that we're not sitting back onto the tailbone, but we're sitting slightly forward of the tailbone. So sometimes a little more lift can really help you get that feeling that you're sitting forward just a bit. We'll take a moment to connect with our breath, sitting tall, also relaxing, let the soft tissues of your body drape over your bones like clothes. I've been reading a book, learning of new science about the breath. So I've been um, exploring some new breath exercises and then oldies but goodies. So that's this next one, which is called the sipping breath. 
I'll take us through a little process and feel free to breathe normally at any point if it feels like a little too much. For the sipping breath, you'll be breathing through your nose. And after you exhale all the way, the inhale is like this. So you're taking in little bits of air and then you just really take in a lot and then exhale all the way. Tiny sips of air as you fill up your lungs. And then a full exhale. Take one more full breath out and sipping breath in. Breathe out and just relax, see what you feel. I'll give us another round. And in this round, you would do either what we just did, or you can add a forward bend where your exhale will bow forward. And then when you're sipping, you'll be sitting back up. So we'll take five breaths like that, going at your own pace. Exhale all the way with the option to go forward. Inhale your sips to rise. And four more breaths with your own breath. As you finish your rounds, sit tall and simply notice. Breathe and feel the effect of the sipping breath. If you like to change your position, maybe change the cross of your legs or adjust, let's take some stretches for the neck. I'll just mirror you, so this will be up to the side. Or some people like to kind of sit on the hand, and then you'll get a little more pull. Tall through your spine, long through the neck, and then drop left ear toward left shoulder. Breath is flowing. There could be a little nod up and down in the chin, feeling into the stretch. Slowly lift, head to center. Take your right arm and now tuck it behind your back. Ear to shoulder movement. And now look down so your nose is more pointing to your left shoulder. Breathe here, right shoulder heavy. And if you want a little more, the left hand could rest on the back of the head. Without forcing, soften into the stretch. Coming out is gonna be really gentle. Just drop your chin down toward the center of your chest and slowly lift your head. Roll shoulders a bit and see how that felt. For the other side, left arm reaches out or there's an option to sit on your hand if that feels good. I found I sat on my hand and then I wanted to loosen my hand but still be sitting on it. That sort of gave me the best stretch there. Align your neck and your spine and tilt your head over to the right. Shoulders heavy, using your breath to create space in the upper ribs. 
and that triangle shape between the side of your neck and the top of the shoulder. Come out slowly, raise your head. Now the left arm is gonna tuck in the small of your back. And it's okay too, if that shoulder's kind of tight and your elbow is like a wing, that's totally good. Yeah. Start with the ear tilt, so ear down toward the shoulder and then rotate, point your nose down at the right shoulder. Approach the stretch without forcing. Give space to relax. Left shoulder heavy. And just an option, right hand on the back of your head. Coming out is very gentle. First chin down toward the center of the chest. Lift your head up, release arm, roll shoulders. See what you feel. You may want to do a little cat and cow movement, twisting your spine. Take a moment to feel the effects for the last few poses. Stretch your legs out so you'll create the letter L shape, Dandasana, the staff pose. And this pose in actuality is a muscular pose in my experience. There's always an the option to be sitting on a little prop. Again, that's giving us the feeling of not sitting back on the tailbone, but forward onto the sitting bones. Extend your legs. Toes pointed up at the sky, firm the muscles around your knee. Hands beside your hips or hands back just a little bit. Push your arms down. And some of us touch the ground, some of us have hands that float depending on your proportions. Lift the heart forward, low back slightly forward as your legs stay engaged. Shoulder blades back just a little bit. And there's still a sense of softness. Being able to feel, to breathe. Feel that string up through the crown of your head, lengthening you. Another breath to feel the staff pose. Soften that. Lean back on your arms, and we'll do windshield wipers. <laughs> Feet to the mat, knees side to side. Come into staff once again. And this is a crowd favorite in this class. <laughs> Let's bend one knee, point it out to the side. Your leg on the ground, just bend that knee until you can get your hand by the foot. So for some of us, that could be even really close in. See how you can make that happen. And first position is soft. So hand on top of the other. Release your spine over your leg. Raise your head. Align your spine. And take your top arm. Trace it up and back. Nice. Hand stack, up your head, relax your back. And that'll be our cycle. Raise the head, long spine, reach the arm, and come back down. Hand to hand, relax your spine. Make this pose about softening more than alignment. A process of feeling, 
There could be little movements that help you to soften in specific places based on what you feel. Gradually, your arm might be circling. See what feels right to help you open up your chest and shoulder. Another moment, feel free to hold any part of the pose. Sit tall and change out your legs. Bend the other knee. So the leg that's flat, just bend that knee until you can reach hand to foot. We'll start in that release position. Let your spine come forward. The spine and chest are going to be like on the inside of the knee if you clear the knee. Spine long. Stack hand over hand and let your head be heavy. Lift your head, long spine. And take your top arm, reach it up and back. Release forward, exhale, hand over hand, heavy head. In this pose, you don't have to be breathing in a certain way. There's a sense of flexibility, curiosity. Your arm may do circles to help open the shoulder, opening the side of your body. Option to rest in any part of that flow as we finish up. Lift your spine, straight legs. For the next pose, we're going to be using the furniture from the beginning of class. So go ahead and get situated where you can use that. We'll start in the legs up the chair position or legs up the couch. That's what I usually do. I just lie in my living room and put my legs on the couch. Let your spine settle into the ground. For pelvic tilt and tuck, tilt means that you lift the top of your sacrum and dig the tailbone in, and then tuck is the reverse. You use the abs to push the top of the sacrum down. Smooth breaths as you open up your spine by rocking the base of the spine. Relax your movement, and now walk your feet up so your feet will be on the edge of that. You kind of have the instinct to move a little bit away. Yeah, that feels good. You'll want some space there so your knees are a little bit um, open. And with this movement, this is a little bit like a bridge, a little bit like a shoulder stand. So you'll be pushing your feet in to roll up your back and then roll it down to the tailbone. And take a little time to configure that movement. The next time your hips are on the ground, just walk your shoulder blades closer together. That's a key aspect of the foundation of the pose. Outer shoulder blade, tricep area is rooting down. And at any point, you may like to hold. This is an easy access to a shoulder stand where your hands would hold up the low back or the back of the hips. One or both feet might float up to have a little fun upside down. There is a great anti-gravity stretch where we're lowering one leg at a time. 
kind of like a hybrid plow pose. Gradually roll your spine down, taking care. Hug knees toward the chest and roll your side your spine side to side. Rock all the way over onto one side. And we'll set up the fish pose. For this, you'll use your cushion or your blanket and create a lift underneath your upper back. And there's room to experiment a little bit. Sternum is the highest part of your body. You may allow the neck to drop back, opening the front of the neck muscles. If that feels a little disorienting, you might also support the base of the skull on the edge of the blankets. So there's less of a upside down feeling. We'll be resting for a couple minutes here. Arms could be in cactus shape or we have the grounding position with hands on the belly. Breath slows down as you relax. Being able to rest is part of this pose. So know that you could always rearrange the things that are under your backs. So you feel like you're really resting. You're able to release. Coming out is going to be super gentle. Bend your knees one at a time and put your feet on the mat and then just roll slowly to your side. Yeah, curl up on your side. Bring your head so it can rest on the bottom arm. Take the prop out from under you and roll on your back. Hug knees to chest. Curl up into a little ball, forehead toward the knees. Take another moment for any last stretches before we do our final resting pose. And you may have guessed it, but we have the opportunity to do legs up the chair again. Give yourself time to configure. Remember you might use the cushion under your calves or under your glutes so that you find a really restful, comfortable place. This could be a great time also to bundle up. Maybe you grab socks, sweater, add blankets to be comfortable. At times, you may find yourself releasing on a deeper level. 
softening more, dissolving even more. Gently expand your breath. You may like to take a few exhales out of your mouth, feeling a deep release. There might be a sound that helps you to release with your exhale, like a sigh or really any sound. <sighs> Twinkle fingers and toes, wake your body up with movement. Bring your feet onto the edge of the chair and roll your knees side to side. Take a moment for any stretching in this position. Slowly come up to sit. Take your time. Even though we formally stop a yoga practice, one goal is to continue this inner awareness, this sense of open heart, a sense of love that radiates from within. So just take a moment to consider how you'd like to bring your practice through the rest of the day. hands together by the heart. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you have a great rest of the day. Namaste.